next thing that we're going to be looking at here is we're going to try and find the constant of integration. What did we? What was the letter we used for the constant of integration? Yeah, it was the plus C. We always had that plus C that we got at the end of things, okay? So we're now actually going to try and find out. Sometimes we actually are going to find out what that plus C actually was. And we need to be given some extra information to be able to find out what that plus C was. So I've said here, recall that when we integrate, we get a constant of integration, which could be any real value. It just could be any number. It could be 0, it could be 10, it could be minus 5, it could be a fifth, it could be the square root of 2. It could be anything at all. This means that we don't know what the exact original function was. Do you remember why we said that was? Um, can you remember why we had that plus C if we're saying the reverse of integrating, of differentiating something? Why we had to have that extra constant there? Good. So when you differentiate a function that has a constant, the constant term will, will di differentiate to zero or will disappear, which means we need to always have a constant term there because it could have been there to begin with. So um, this equation here, sorry, this curve with this equation that I've got here, this is y equals f of, well, sorry, y equals f of x passes through 1, 3. This is the gradient function. This is f dash x. Remember that f dash x just means the function that has been differentiated. Um, it says, given that f dash x is 3x squared, find the equation of the curve. So we know if they've told us that the gradient function is 3x squared, we know that we would have to find out what f of x is by doing the reverse process because we don't want to differentiate, we want to go backwards. So what does 3x squared integrate to? x cubed plus c. Okay, because there's obviously going to be a plus c there. Remember what we did, we increased the power from 2 to 3. We divided by that new power, so we just ended up with x cubed. Best thing you should do, and you should always be in the habit of this, I still am in the habit of it, I still look at this and I think to myself, okay, well, if I differentiate that, do I get that? Because differentiation is the first thing we learn. It's always going to be easier than integration, okay? It's true even when we do the new techniques of differentiation and integration in year 13. Um, it's always about differentiation first, so it's best, best to always think of that. Now, we're going to try and find out what this constant of integration is. So when we integrate it, we've got here that it's either going to be, uh, we've said it's x cubed plus c, but this plus c means that this x cubed graph, it could have been this graph. It could have been this graph. Or it could be this graph that we've got up here. It could be any of those ones, because you know when you plus a, a, a constant value to a graph, what transformation does it do to the graph? if you just add on a value to a graph. Yeah, it moves up. I heard a few people saying moves up. What's the most mathematical way we could say moves up? Could we try and make that sound more formal? Adam? Yeah, good translation. I was looking for the word translation. You could say translation, you could give a particular vector that would have a zero at the top and then some other value, okay? So we need to find out which one of these is. I said, if we know one point on the curve, it leaves us with only one possibility. And it tells us in the question that the original curve goes through 1, 3. Okay? So that means it can't be any of these curves. It's going to have to be a specific one that will have the specific value of c that will make the whole thing work. So we know here, when x is 1, f of x is 3, or y is 3. So I can now say, let's just grab that coordinate. This means when x is 1, f of x is 3. And sometimes we write that as f of 1 is 3. Do you remember that kind of notation from GCSE that we wrote something like that? So we know from this thing that we've got here that 3 is equal to 1 cubed plus c. The value of the function is 3. The input is 1. So what's the value of c? So the value of c is 2, which means that the equation of the curve, f of x, is x cubed plus 2. And there's two things you can check with this question. 
we can check that the two conditions are true. Well, this curve, it does pass through the point 1, 3, because when you put in 1, the result you get from it is 3. The other condition is that if you differentiated f of x, you would get 3x squared, and then the plus 2 would disappear. So the two things that the question was asking us about remain true, so it works. Okay. So what I'm going to ask for us to try now is you've got a question that is here. It's a little bit tricky for you to see on the board, so I might actually just rewrite that bit. It says minus 10x to the minus half. And it says a curve with equation y equals f of x passes through the point 4, 25. So they've given us some extra information about the curve now, which means we are going to be able to find out what c is. And we are going to try and find out what f of x is. Um, if you do finish that quickly, uh, we can have a go at this second part as well if you want to. But I think for now, let's see if we can do the same method we've just done to try and find out what f of x is. If you're not sure, I'm going to do it slowly on the board so you can always have a look up and see what I'm doing for this as well, okay? Can you leave it as what, sorry? Oh, this is part B of the equation, which is something, that, this is part B of the question, sorry, which is something that's different. So this is now asking us to do something that's a different kind of question. So 
to find the equation of the normal to the curve at this point has got nothing to do with integration anymore, does it? It's actually, now you can see this is the topic you did with Mr. Udin. So they've got both things now within one question. I'll talk about how we do that one in a second. So here, the power is minus a half. When the power increases, it becomes a half. And you divide by a half, which is the same as multiplying by <coughs> 2. So it goes from minus 10 to minus 20. OK? Okay, so follows pretty much what we did on that previous bit. So you, you can check in a moment if you haven't finished it yet what I've got done on here. And I'll leave this on the board if you haven't quite finished writing it down. But it just followed that same process. Integrate to find out what f of x is. Remember, you've got the plus c. Substitute in the coordinates to find out what the value of c is. And in this particular case, the value of c is 53. Now, this question happened to be using the f of x notation, but quite easily I could have said dy by dx equals 3 over 8 x squared minus 10x to the minus a half plus 1, and I could have said find y. Okay, just because this question was with f of x notation, it doesn't mean that it's always going to be with f of x notation. Sometimes it might be with y and dy by dx. Just because the last two examples we've done are like that, it doesn't mean it's always like that, okay? That's what we would do for part A of the question. But part B of the question, I'm not going to actually do part B of the question, but what would I need to do for part B of the question here? What would the steps be if, I, if you have looked at this to find the equation of the normal to the curve at that point? From the stuff you did with Mr. Odin in the bill? Would we have to differentiate it? Good. Yeah, they've already got it differentiated for you. So we wouldn't have to differentiate it. But once we, what do we now need to do with this, this function that we've got here, Nibble? If we're trying to do the, yeah? Good. How would you find the perpendicular gradient? What would you need to do before that? Good. So you're going to sub in the x value, which is here, which is 4. So you would sub 4 into here to find out what the gradient is. But they want the gradient, uh, sorry, they want the equation of the normal. So what would I need to do with that answer? Take the perpendicular gradient and do that by doing negative reciprocal. And then how do I find the equation of the curve? What's the equation, that formula that we use? y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. But they want it looking like this, so you need to make sure that you get rid of expanding it, putting it all on one side. They want them as integers, so we need to make sure that we multiply it up to get it into that form. But we're not actually going to do that bit there, okay? I just wanted to remind you, this is the kind of way that these topics might come up together, okay? And interestingly, I, you wouldn't need to differentiate this because they've already given you it differentiated, but it's a nice check if you did differentiate this it should give you that thing that they've given you there. So we're going to do a few questions just to find out, find me, um, looking at what the, the value of C is, okay? And I'll write down some questions that I want you to do from exercise 13C.